What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to another video, another limits question. So we have to solve these two limits here. And then based on these two answers on the patterns in the answers, we have to find what this general limit is. So we got the limit as x approaches one of x to the power eight minus one over x to the power 10 minus one. So notice that we can't do a direct substitution because if we sub in one, we'll have zero over zero, which is undefined. But because we have that zero over zero result, we know that x minus one is a factor for both of these functions in the numerator and the denominator, right? If you can plug in that x value one and it makes it zero, then if you remember by the factor theorem from advanced functions, that means x minus one is going to be a factor. So if we could factor both of these and then have this x minus one factor in both of them, then we could cancel that out and then we could do a direct substitution. So let's do these one by one. So x to the power of eight minus one, let's factor that. So notice that x to the power of eight minus one, you can do, there's multiple ways to factor this. So I'm first gonna do a difference of squares. So we could do x to the power of four minus one times x to the power of four plus one, right? So notice that this and this are the same thing, difference of squares. So x to the power of four is the square root of x to the power of eight. So that's where that went, and then the square root of one is this and that right there. So then we can further do a difference of squares on this. So this x to the power of four minus one, that would factor into x to the power of two minus one, x to the power of two plus one, and then this x to the power of four plus one, we'll just leave like that, that can't factor. And then this x to the power of two minus one, that factors into x minus one, x plus one. And then we have x squared plus one, and x to the power of four plus one, like that. So now notice that we isolated for that x minus one factor for the numerator function. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this limit and rewrite it. So we got the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1, x plus 1, x squared plus 1, x to the power of 4 plus 1. Right, so that's what x to the power of 8 minus 1 all factors into, and I just did it purely with a difference of squares on everything. So now let's factor x to the power of 10 minus one. This one's gonna be a little bit tougher because x to the power of 10 minus one, we can do a difference of squares on that, which would be x to the power of five minus one, then x to the power of five plus one. But notice because five doesn't divide by two smoothly, we can't do a difference of squares on that. So we're gonna to have to factor it differently. And then also notice this is not a difference of cubes. We can't do a difference of cubes because five is not a multiple of three either. It's not a multiple of two or a multiple of three. But notice that x minus one is definitely a factor in x to the power of five minus one. Because if we plug in one here into x to the power of five minus one, we're still gonna get zero. So by the factor theorem, we know that this has a factor of x minus one. We just don't know what that remaining bracket is going to be over here. And then this x to the power of five plus one, we would just leave, that doesn't factor. So we've got to figure out what that remaining bracket is. And to do that, we actually have to do long division or synthetic division. I'm going to do long division. If you remember that from advanced functions. So this is an example where we've got to bring back tools from the previous course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x to the power of five minus one so I'm gonna erase this for now. I'm gonna give myself some room here. And I'm gonna divide it by x minus one. And notice that there's a bunch of terms in the middle missing. We gotta put those placeholders there, if you remember, for division of polynomials. So I'm gonna put x to the power of five plus zero, x to the power of four plus zero, x to the three plus zero, x squared plus zero x. And then we got the minus one right there. So x goes, into x to the power of five how many times? x to the power of four times. This times that would give us x to the power of five, and then this would be minus x to the four. If we subtract these two, this would be zero, and then this would be zero minus 
negative 1, there's like a negative 1 in front here, which would give us positive 1. So we'd have positive x to the power of 4. And then let's bring that 0, x3 down. So x goes into x to the 4, x3 times. We just continue doing this. So again, you may have to go back to the advanced functions videos and review this uh, division of polynomials. So here we'll have x to the power of 3. Let's bring that 0x squared down. x goes into x to the power of 3, x squared times. Now another thing I want to mention is that uh, you can also do this question with a table of values if you want. That would kind of be the uh, cheating way of doing it, quote unquote. You can make a table of values where we're approaching one from both sides, numbers really close, 0.99 and 1.001, for example. But you're going to see that this is going to actually equal a decimal. So you want to pick numbers that are really close to one. So you maybe want to go like 0.999. You may want to go like five decimal places from both sides that are close to one in order to get the actual answer, you're going to see it's going to be a decimal. So this here is going to be x squared, bring the 0x down. Then this would be x, x squared, minus x, and then we'll end up with x minus 1 when we bring this minus 1 down. This 0x we brought down over there. And then this goes into that one time. Then we'll have x minus 1, remainder is going to be 0. And so x to the power of 5 minus 1 basically factors into this times all of that right there. So we could rewrite that bracket. x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1. Then we'll have x to the power of 5 plus 1. That's this bracket over here. So this x to the power of 5 minus 1 factored into these two brackets. So if I take that and I write it over here, uh, x minus 1 x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1. And then we got this x to the power of 5 plus 1. So I'm going to erase all of this over here. So this x to the power of 10 minus 1, it factors into that. All right, so that's kind of the tricky part of these questions is uh, was factoring that x to the power of 5 minus 1. We're actually going to have to use that again in the second limit. So the second limit is not going to take as long because we're going to use the same result we got. But that part I feel like is the trickiest. But notice now, what can we do? This goes away, that goes away. And so now what we can do is a direct substitution because we won't get 0 in that denominator anymore or in the numerator. So if we plug in 1 now for the rest of this stuff, notice we'll have 2 times 2 times 2, because notice 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 squared plus 1 is 2, and then 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 is 2. So we'll have 2 times 2 times 2, and then over here we'll have uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, times 2. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little confused there. Right? If we plug in 1 for all the x's here, that whole bracket is going to be 5. And then this bracket, 1 to the power of 5 plus 1, that's going to be 2. So then we'll end up with what? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 over 10, which is 0 0.8 decimal, or 4 over 5 if you want to keep that as a fraction and reduce that fraction. So that's what this limit is going to equal. It's going to equal 4 over 5 or 0 0.8. And because we got that decimal, that's why I said when you plug in, if you're going to do a table where you're approaching one from the left side and from the right side, you want to pick numbers that are really, really close to one to really get this decimal. Because what you're going to start getting, if you just pick like 0.9 and then let's say 1.1, numbers that aren't too, too close to 1, then you're going to get like more decimals out here. So it's going to be hard to tell what they are. But the closer and closer you get to 1, you're going to start seeing there's going to be zeros forming here, and then decimals. And then the closer you get, there will be more zeros. And so it's going to be obvious to see with the pattern, it's approaching 0 0.8.
But if you want to get 0 0.8 right away, then you would do it like this with factoring. All right, so that is the answer to, uh, to the first limit. It's 4 over 5, or 0 0.8. This one here, so x to the power of 6 minus 1, first let's do a difference of cubes on that. So x to the power of 3 minus 1, x to the power of 3 plus 1. First off, notice with this limit as well, if we plug in 1, the numerator and denominator are both going to be 0. So again, we got to get that x minus 1 as a separate factor. And then this x to the power of 20 minus 1, that's going to factor into x to the power, uh, x to the power of 10 minus 1, and then x to the power of 10 plus 1. So we did a difference to squares on both of these to start. I'm kind of doing them both at the same time this time instead of doing them individually like before. Now, these two I'm just going to leave because notice that these two brackets, if we plug in 1, they're not going to be 0. So we don't need to really factor this. This we can't really factor. This here you can factor. Uh, that's a sum of cubes. But again, we're trying to get the x minus 1 factor, not the x plus 1 factor. So I'm just going to leave these two brackets. But these two brackets I'm going to factor now. x to the power of 3 minus 1, if you remember, difference of cubes, you may have to go back and review that again. It follows that formula. So this would be x minus 1, x squared plus x plus 1, and then we got the x to the power of 3 plus 1. So this factors into that. That's a difference of cubes. And then x to the power of 10 minus 1, we already factored that in number 1. So I'm going to use that exact same result. So that's going to factor that x to the power of 10 minus 1. Um, this is going to be x minus 1, x to the power of 4 plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 times x to the 5 plus 1, and then we still have that x to the power of 10 plus 1. Right, so this bracket here factored into these three brackets. I use the exact same result from number 1, and then x to the power of 10 plus 1, x to the power of 10 plus 1, that still stays. And now notice these cancel out. And so if we plug in 1 now, here we'll have 3 times 2, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2 times 2. And so here we'll end up with what? 6 over 20, or uh, not 6 over 10, 6 over 20, or 3 over 10, or 0 0.3. Right? So this limit here equals 3 over 10, or 0 0.3. If you made a table of values approaching that 1 very close, you'd get the exact same uh, answer. You'd get something really close, hopefully, to 0 0.3. So, uh, yeah, that's how you do these. So, a little bit more intense factoring, but nevertheless, it equals 3 over 10 or 0 0.3, the second one. So, not sure if you notice yet, but there's a pattern here. So, based on the two answers above, what is the limit as x approaches 1 of x to the power a minus 1 over x to the power b minus 1? Well, if you notice, 4 over 5, that's the same as 8 over 10. That's what we initially got, and then we reduce it to 4 over 5 or 0 0.8. Notice 3 over 10 is the same as 6 over 20, which reduces to 3 over 10 or 0 0.3. So this one's 8 over 10, this one's 6 over 20. So this same format, if we got a and b, this limit here is basically always going to equal a over b, based on this pattern. Right? So you can, if you get a limit in this format, it has to be this exact format, remember. Right? It can't be like a plus 1 or anything like that. It has to be x to the power a minus 1, x to the power b minus 1, where a and b are some kind of number. So we could pick anything. Let's say we got uh, x to the power 2 minus 1 over x to the power of 31 minus 1. We know this limit is going to equal 2 over 31. Right? It's always just going to be a over b based on the patterns that we got in number 1 and 